Hello everyone, my name is Lori Rubin and I'm with Viewbug and I'm here with Jessica Drosen and she has got some fantastic images. If you've never seen her work before, you're in for a real treat. Jessica, welcome so much for joining us today. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I'm really excited to be here. Great. Well, we're going to start out. We're going to have Jessica talk a little bit about herself and her work. We're going to take a look at her website here. So Jessica, tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, what you do and what makes you passionate about your photography. Okay. I guess my background is that I was a painting major in college and I um, was very interested in basically all kinds of different art from, you know, the old masters to very modern art. Um, when I moved out to California, I became a graphic designer and an art director and I worked for video game companies and entertainment companies such as Blizzard and Fox Interactive, uh, Universal Interactive, and I learned a lot about creating key art for things like their box covers or ads or um, posters, things like that. And I think the combination of my painting background and my graphic design background was always something that I was really excited about. When I had my second child, though, it became very difficult for me to go back to work. So I opted to stay home with my boys. And at some point, I, I really found myself looking for a, a creative outlet and also a way that I could document my children as they grew up and are growing up way too fast. And I got inspired with my digital camera. I think the world of digital photography was much more exciting when I realized that all of these skills that I had developed in the marketing department and doing graphic design, that I could translate these same ideas, uh, working with textures, working with altering colors and contrast and all that stuff, that I could easily translate that into my digital photographic work. And I could essentially use these photographs that I had taken as a foundation and then I could build onto them uh, and create something a little bit different and, and hopefully more unique and that was about not only documenting people and, and doing portraiture, which I love, but also hopefully communicating a little bit something deeper about who they are and and I guess maybe who I am as I as I strive to capture them. Yeah, these are just absolutely beautiful. So uh, please uh, visit her website, uh, Jessica Drosen at, at dot com, and uh, we're also going to take a look at her ViewBug uh, portfolio as well. So this is on ViewBug, um, just absolutely fantastic images. And we're going to take a look at a few of her favorites, and she's going to tell us a little bit about them, a little background. Uh, on these guys, so oh, just absolutely gorgeous. Love your work. Oh, thank you. <laughs> absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, Jessica, we're going to take a look at some of your, uh, I assume your favorite images. I know you probably have a ton of them, <laughs> but we're going to take a look at a few of these. Boy, this is, you know, this is such an iconic image of yours. When I see this, it's, it's, it's you. <laughs> it's your work. It's absolutely beautiful. So tell us a little bit about this one. Honestly, this is one of my favorite images. I think like a lot of artists, I, I tend to sometimes create something and then perhaps a week or two later I see all the things in it that I don't like. And this is really one of those images that, for me, I keep enjoying. Um, I like the way that I've, I've composed it and I like how the, the leaves, which are actually overlays that I photographed and have placed in there, how they're sort of gently falling around her. I get really inspired sometimes in different ways and from different things. And in this case, uh, I've been watching some martial arts movies and I've been really inspired with the way that some of the scenes have been colorized and the surreal nature of how some of the, the scenes have been constructed. And um, I started thinking about the idea of fall and autumn and leaves falling and what change of seasons meant symbolically and literally. So I placed my model here, and luckily we just had these beautiful leaves, the, obviously real leaves on the, on the ground, and then leaves on the, the bamboo. But then I also created some falling just to create, hopefully, a, a feeling of, of that magic of when the seasons change and the, the colors become so beautiful and vibrant. This is great. I didn't even realize <laughs> that you had actually put in those leaves. It looks so natural. Thank you. Oh, very nice. I believe this is your son. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, that, <laughs> that, is my, that is my youngest. And this was sort of a spontaneous shoot in that I had been working on a client shoot 
And as that finished up, I was close by a baseball field where my husband and my older son uh, and this younger one were all practicing baseball. And they had the fields uh, lit up that night. And so when I went to join my family, the little one wanted to be practicing his pop flies. And I had all of my gear with me. And just on a fun whim, I decided to grab my fisheye lens. I have a 15 millimeter fisheye. And I snapped it on my camera. And I had enough available light because of the lights around the ball field that I would lay down in the grass. And as my son would toss these pop flies up to himself, and, and then his goal is always to have to dive and catch them. So he'll throw them a little bit out of his reach and then he would dive and, and jump in the air. And then my goal was then to be able to capture him doing that because I just thought it was so adorable how excited he was and the little faces he was making as he strived to catch his balls. That's such a great action shot. <laughs> very, very cute. Oh, wow. This is just incredible. So what what is she lying in? Is this, um, did you pour milk in the water or something? Or <laughs> what is this? I have a, a kid's inflatable pool. So what I did was I filled it with some water, not a, a lot of water. You can see she's she's laying in it comfortably. It's not too high. Um, and then I bought some dry milk. And I simply poured in some dry milk until I had a nice consistency of milk. I, I wanted it to be cloudy enough that, for example, when you see her hand, that it completely disappears and has you know a lot of opacity to it or opaqueness to it I should say so yeah I, I laid her down in the milk and I picked a bunch of flowers from my backyard and we made a little garland for her hair and I put the flowers I sort of tried to artfully arrange them around her and we created our own little Ophelia series I was lucky enough that this model who's a good friend of mine she was also reciting, she's an actor, and so she knew a lot of Shakespeare's play, and she was actually reciting some of the lines in her own head as I shot this, which I think helps to add an emotional depth to it. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. I love the colors. and It's such an amazing image. It really catches your eye. Very nice. Thank you so much. Tell us about this one. This is very dramatic and kind of moody. Last summer in Nebraska was an exceptionally turbulent one for storms. And in the, the month of June, a number of tornadoes had touched down in the area around where I grew up. In fact, one got about a mile outside of my hometown, and my parents literally called me, I think, concerned if something bad was going to happen. So I then went back to Nebraska about 10 days after these tornadoes had touched down and there was still these very ominous dark skies and the very day that I got in town there were tornado sirens going off in a town 16 miles away and so we were all just watching the skies. So anyway, one of these days there were no tornado warnings out but the skies looked very dark and ominous and I took my niece out with me. And so we drove around some of the country roads around where I grew up, and I asked her to walk out into the cornfield. I wanted to specifically reference an illustration that I've always loved, which is Andrew Wyeth's Christina's World. Mm -hmm. It's something that you, you kind of get used to seeing when you go back to rural areas in the country, um, Nebraska, or I'm sure Iowa and various other places. As people have moved, you know, into the cities, you see all these abandoned farmhouses, and you just sort of drive by them and wonder what their stories were. Who where were the kids that played in these houses? Where are they now? And what, right. you know, who lived and was born and died here, and and now they're just left out rotting in these fields and you know being plowed around. And so I I guess I wanted to reference that painting, Christina's World, and also just talk about this idea of how rural life is changing and sort of document that as it appears right now in, in northeastern in rural Nebraska. In a weird way, these, these houses represented people's stories and a strange form of portraiture as well. So I wanted to juxtapose my niece, you know, vibrant and young, but she'd moved away from this area with my brother and, and his family with, you know, what was left behind. Yeah, it's a real storytelling type image. It's beautiful, very painterly type, rather than just a photograph. It's uh, 
very artistic, beautiful. Um, yeah, I'm definitely inspired by a lot of painters and illustrators. I can see that, <laughs> definitely. And this is a fun one. Uh, who is this little guy? That is the same kid that was catching the ball. That is my son, Logan. <laughs> and he is stomping around in a rain puddle. I'm in Southern California, and we haven't gotten nearly enough rain this year, but we did get a nice downpour one day, so we put on his little rain slicker and some boots, <laughs> and he got a taste of what it's like to be able to really splash and play in, in the puddles, and he thoroughly enjoyed himself. Fantastic, and lovely reflection. It kind of duplicates the so effort. <laughs> it's beautiful. Oh, this is just absolutely breathtaking. I love this. So what, what was behind your thought on taking this image and setting it up? This particular image is called Kansas. I think it's a similar feel to me of the one that I showed you with my niece in Nebraska. I, I think within myself, although I live in Los Angeles, there's this feeling that I've left part of myself behind in that rural Midwestern part of the country where it's such a different way of life and I miss it, but at the same time I, I know that I can't go back there. And so I wanted to sort of capture that wistful feeling that I was having that day as I wonder where I can fit in. Mm -hmm. And so I shot this and then I wanted to give it a very dreamy and open feel. So she is in a field of flowers, but I added the sky secondarily so that it appears that, that there is this horizon line that's going on forever as it would if you're in Kansas and Nebraska and you just ha you have that flatness and you can see you know where the land touches the sky. And so I kind of created my own uh, rural world here in Los Angeles and, and just sort of wanted to step into that again. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. It's, again, one of those images that you just cannot help but just stop and, and, and savor it. It's just, it's beautiful. I, I love storytelling images because, you know, you wonder what's going on, what the photographer was thinking. Um, and it's really great to be able to hear your thoughts of when you're taking a photo and how this all comes together. And this is a really interesting image here. It's, it looks like a, I'm not too sure what's going on, but can you tell us about the birdcage and the, and the woman that's sure. looking out to see? Well, this is kind of a fun one. I was working with a fashion accessory maker that is Cosmic Souls, and she had sent me some pieces that she had asked for me to photograph and wanted to have some, hopefully to have some iconic storytelling imagery. And so I thought about the idea of taking my model to the ocean and putting her on these rocks and sort of doing a, a fun modern day take on a siren, luring the sailors in so they can crash their boats on, on waves. It's, it's more of a fun storytelling idea. And I decided to just reference the birdcage because there were feathers in her hair and I thought it would be sort of fun to incorporate some of the golden and brass tones in the, in the jewelry pieces themselves with that secondary image of the bird cage. And it's open and there's some flowers in it. And so it's sort of open for interpretation on the meaning. She's, she's a siren. Does that mean she's capturing people's lives or she, you know, what, the, the whole cage symbolism? Mm -hmm. You know, is she freed from her cage? Is she putting others in a cage? I, I like to leave ideas open for the viewer to interpret themselves. I don't necessarily have a real strong need for them to know exactly why I'm doing something. I want them to sort of see an image and be able to make their own interpretations of what that could possibly mean to them. That's leave great. it rather open-ended. Yep, a little mystery there. <laughs> That's <lovely. Yes. laughs> Oh, this is just so sweet. And uh, I think the title of this had something to do with the rescue dog. Am I correct on yeah. that? Yeah. Okay. Yes. We sadly lost our 15-year-old dog this last summer. And the house just felt so empty without her that not long after, we went to our local animal shelter and we adopted one dog. And then uh, a month later, we ended up adopting another dog from a, another animal shelter. And... We just could not be happier 
with our dogs. We love these dogs. That's I mean, <laughs> um, hopefully you can see how much love my child has for, this is just one of the dogs, but both of them. He adores them. My other son adores them. I think kids and animals just, they, they need each other mm -hmm. and they bring out the best in each other. And when they're upset with each other or upset with me, there's a dog that they can cuddle That's with. That's right. And, <laughs> <laughs> and so I just wanted to capture that that special connection and also if people found out that I have rescue dogs and can see what sweet creatures that they are and how perfect they have fit into our family um, if there are any notions out there that shelter dogs are biters or somehow are problem dogs I'm, I'm hoping that maybe I can dispel a little bit of that because we just like I said we we couldn't be happier with our dogs yeah they're wonderful this image is full of love it's lovely I love the uh, backlit too you got a nice little rim lighting happening around there and, and the, the tones are just beautiful well Very thank nice. you so much mm -hmm. okay Jessica so now you're taking us into Photoshop and we're going to take a look at one of your images from before and it looks like you're going to show us some of the layers and how you got to the after, the very end result. Yes. So here is the, the before image. And you see I've got some pretty strong lighting going on. I only use natural light, but there was a window over here. And we were able to sort of use that to our best advantage. Um, then I started applying some of my actions that I create just to enhance certain things. Um, bringing out a little bit of the color, pulling out details in the shadows, doing a little bit of skin retouching. I try not to overdo it. I like skin to, to look like skin still, but there's a little retouching there. That's just taking out a couple blue casts in the face and warming the tones. My concept when I originally shot it was I wanted it to feel very dreamy and ethereal and I ended up naming this daydream. I wanted to somehow obscure the fact that I have this screen behind her and all that patterning. So what I did was I actually ended up using one of the cloud overlays from my Macabre Skies collection. You can see here, this is actually a normal mode. Um, and it's literally clouds that I've placed right on top of her to give it sort of a, of a dreamy, uh, quality and also to help me ob obscure the fact that I have a pattern screen behind her. Um, then I went ahead and I used an extra sharp detail brush to really bring out some of these details that I wanted to enhance. The fact that the wind was sort of blowing her hair and her freckles. Then I added an action called Mossy which is from the Beautiful World Tints collection. And as you can see, that lessens some of the contrast, and it really gives it an ethereal, dreamlike quality. And what I do typically, I, I, I just play. I, I really explore. I, I open up these actions, and I'll try different things and see what I like. Um, I wanted to add in a little bit more uh, shape to the image, so I put in uh, a deep glow here. And then I wanted to brighten the highlights, so I added a brighter glow. And then I wanted to try to experiment with adding a texture to really make this feel more artistic. For people that don't know, this is what a texture looks like. And the way that you use a texture is you simply open it and you can grab it and place it right on top of your image and this. And then you just need to make sure that it's covering the image entirely. And then you choose one of the blending modes here. So this is normal. This is overlay. This is soft light. And as you can see, it kind of gives it sort of a magical, ethereal, uh, and it adds some depth to the image. Then what I would do is, let's say if I didn't like all of this little splattering of detail over her face, I could do a number of things. I could put it back in normal mode, and I could select a color, put it back into this, and a larger brush, 
I could paint it out without affecting any of the color tones that this is established because as you see it significantly changes some of the color tones. Or I could add a mask just by pressing this and painting with a soft black brush. And as you see when I do it with a mask I'm actually eliminating tone and texture. Now let me just show you, this is what I actually, I'm going to just get rid of that, this is where I actually netted out on it. Um, I had this one in soft light and you can see all the masking that I did around it. And then I used this one also in soft light, but I did less masking. And then I just added a little subtle highlight glow. And then some dramatic matte. Sometimes when I look back at my images, I decide that I'd like to edit them just slightly differently. And in this case, I did end up deciding that I wanted to make it a little bit warmer. So I, I think I went back and added the tone Honey from Beautiful World Tints Earthy. So you can see this is what it looks like when you actually add uh, an action tone to it. And you can then adjust the opacity to suit, you know, whatever you're however warm you want it to become and like I showed you with the texture you can uh, mask areas out so that you don't see those tones but basically what I'm thinking about when I'm creating these images is is trying to create something that, that feels unique and special and a little different and, and makes people want to stop and and look at it for a little while and wonder what is happening here what is she doing you know what is this about so hopefully I'm, I'm doing that with these images. Yeah, absolutely. That's beautiful. And really interesting to see all the different, you know, techniques you had to do to get to the very end. I just play. And if you don't like something, it's very easy to, to turn off the eyeball. And I think there's a lot of people out there in the world of photography that have a lot of right and wrong answers and want to say that there's only one true method. And I come from a different philosophy, I suppose, having a painting background and that I think it's really great to play and so when I develop tools such as textures or overlays or actions they're really geared to not necessarily create some final end result but to help you play and if you don't know certain techniques to, to create shortcuts for them but allow people to experiment a little bit and, and find their own unique way to approach editing images that fulfills their soul, their need to create because it should be fun. You should be enjoying yourself when you're sitting down and creating art. Absolutely. Okay, and Jessica, you've got another image that you're going to show us a before and after. This is of a boxer, so take us through this one. This is a piece that I worked on for the creation of album cover art for Titus Macon's new album called Shadow Box. And it's supposed to portray the internal struggle that we all go through as we face our challenges in life and we have to do that in a solitary way mm -hmm. and sort of rising to that. The first thing that I wanted to do is obviously there's problems here with the fact that I've got this telephone pole and just to me I wanted to create a more of an epic look so what I did here was I actually digitally altered the hill slide. I basically cloned it up so that it would feel a little bit taller and a little bit more like he was really just cutting through that hillside. I cloned out any of the unwanted details or cropped them out and then I adjusted the saturation and exposure and the tones in the image so that it felt a little more balanced to me. Um, the next thing I did was I wanted to give it this this feeling of a person who is going in challenging an obstacle walking into the unknown, about to face, you know, face fears, face challenges. And so I wanted to give it a little bit of a cinematic feel here. And so I added a cloud overlay because I just wanted to have a little bit more visual interest. It was a rather just gray overcast day and I, I wanted to have a little more texture there in that sky. And then I also added fog from the Forces of Nature collection that I have then with the masking and just making some adjustments I sort of created it to look like the fog was coming through that gap in the hillside. Next I like adding texture. I always feel like my images that are more conceptual or more cinematic 
look better with a little bit of texture in them. So I added the texture mist from Super Grunge Urban. I have it here in multiply mode and I masked it out over his skin and over the gloves and boots, etc. And there's not as much of it. I lowered the opacity of the texture in the center of the frame and let it be a little bit stronger and help to vignette the edges. But just add a little more of a grungy feel, impart a little bit more of an emotional impact on this image. Um, next, I decided that I wanted to unify the color palette just a little bit more, and so I desaturated it, and I added matte and haze effects. I was really looking for a, a cinematic, gritty image here, and then I went ahead and I selectively sharpened the details with a brush that I created called the Extra Sharp Detail Brush and ran that over some of the texture in his shirt and the boxing gloves and even a little bit over the pavement. I kind of wondered if I was done before, but it seems like when I look at my images, I, I always want to add just a little bit more contrast. So I went ahead and I tinted it very slightly, I believe with the tint foreign film in the fine arts pack of tints. And then I selectively resaturated areas with my selective saturation brush. And so I was able to sort of paint in parts that I wanted your eye to focus on more. And then I went ahead and added a rich vignette, my goal being to really center your focus upon the singer-songwriter here and what he's going to be doing, which is called Shadow Box, and the struggle that he's going to be. I want to really narrow your focus to him and, and what he's about to go through. Okay, so that's fantastic. What a transformation from before until this image here. Just fabulous. Really nice. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's really kind of scary, Jessica, because he's walking the line, and it feels I, like there's going to be cars, something coming at him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, and yeah, I probably should take this moment to say, don't do this on <laughs> busy streets. Don't do what we Jessica were, just did. <laughs> yeah, we, were, we were pretty much out in the boonies, and we had a good view from all sides of us. But uh, yeah, don't recommend it be done in any urban settings. <laughs> <laughs> well, certainly it's, uh, it was well worth it. It's just, uh, just beautiful. Thank you. Well, Jessica, thank you so much for taking us through your lovely images, letting us see inside your very artistic and magical world. Uh, just a really great experience. I hope you all enjoyed it as well. So thank you so much. Well, thank you. I'm very honored that you asked me, and I, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Thanks, everyone.